nine amazing games and three turds in the punch bowl. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Date and I'm your humble narrator and welcome back to another bundle banter. That's right, humble, they're about due, they're coming in hot, and we've got the Plugin Digital and Dear Villagers bundle, which is quite a mouthful, but they've always kind of had these long bundle titles. I'll be honest with you that to me, this one looks pretty tasty. There are a couple of duds in there, but we'll get to them. But before we break down each game individually, let's have a look at the tiers. In the first tier, for one dollar, you get Impulsion, Away, Journey to the Unexpected, Splasher, Striker's Edge. In the Beat the Average tier, we have Mana Spark, Roof Rage, Streets of Red, Devil's Dare Deluxe, and Old School Musical. In the $11 tier, we've got Hover, Dead in Vinland, and Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. Definitely quite a few games that I've played before and absolutely loved. Mana Spark, Splasher, Impulsion, and Roof Rage jump out to me immediately. But how about the other ones? Are they, are they worth the cost? And that's what we're here to determine. So let's take a look at each of these games one by one. Impulsion. Now this is some fantastic physics-based FPS puzzling. Inevitably this game will be compared to Portal, and that's not completely inaccurate, though it does quite a bit to set itself apart. The guns that you're using don't create portals, they create force fields. A blue one to speed you up, and a red one to slow you down and allow you to double jump. It's a simple idea, and honestly, I have no idea why nobody thought of this before now. The gameplay is tight and fast, and it absolutely makes me feel like a ninja. You can also play things slow and methodical if that's more your style, but if you know me, then you'll know that I like to go dumb and loud and slam my face into an obstacle until I learn the correct way to proceed through successive failures. Kind of like an allegory for my life, but I digress. <laughs> the gameplay is fantastic. The graphics are nice, even if the environment is sort of samey all the way through. The voice acting is well done, but the lines that the voice actor was fed are <laughs> extremely heavy-handed. These devs need to take a lesson in show, don't tell. I did feel hungry for more when the game ended. 25 levels isn't anywhere near enough. Definitely a game that deserves more attention, and it was made by students? Good god, those kids have a bright future ahead of them. Away, Journey to the Unexpected. Oh my god, Away is finally released? Now I can finally play as a cute little sugar glider. I've been waiting for Away to come out for so long and it actually released in a bundle. It's uncanny. I almost can't believe... What? It's a different Away. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. Away bills itself as a roguelite love letter to anime and quirkiness. It just seems quite a shame that the developers were so concentrated on being quirky and lol so random that they forgot to make the combat even halfway functional. And the combat is a pretty big part of an action-driven game like this one. The art style is really great. Unfortunately, that's about the only passable thing in this game, in my opinion. The story's a joke, the characters feel like my nine-year-old wrote their lines, and of course, that broken-ass combat system is everywhere you look. Away has some interesting ideas. You recruit party members as weapons, and then you take on their point of view, so... You might see in monochrome or through a cracked lens from a party member wearing broken glasses. It's fun for a few minutes, but it quickly loses its charm as you get your ass handed to you when vision impairment is combined with the broken fucking combat controls. Ugh. The game is short, at around three hours, but I'm willing to bet that most people don't get past the first hour of this mess. Those that do are rewarded with lackluster boss fights, a small pool of vision impairments, and very few dungeons or collectibles. This game is a huge disappointment. The devs should work on art and animation for a clue that actually has a clue about what good game design looks like. This ain't it, Chief. Splasher. If Nihil Umbra woke up in the morning and ate an entire box of Cocoa Crusted Sugar Puffs swimming in a bowl of espresso, you'd end up with Splasher. Nihil Umbra lets you paint the environment with different effects and felt more like a puzzler. Splasher definitely leads towards the action side of things, but there is no denying that they took a ton of inspiration from Nihil Umbra. That's not necessarily a bad thing, they did make it their own. The games look similar, but they taste really different. Rescue workers, avoid hazards, and spray the floors and walls to make them do what you want them to do. Stick Ink basically lets you climb anything. Bounce Ink will make you, uh bounce 
and water gets rid of any ink that isn't needed. Yeah, there are only three things to paint with compared to Nihilumbra's five, but it feels more like streamlining than it does cutting out content. I do sort of miss the icy and fiery inks, but in the end it is extraneous. You will get plenty of juice out of the tools that you're given, and considering that the game has a much faster pace, it is probably a good idea that things were slimmed down in such a way. Great controls, excellent art, fantastic sound design. The only points of criticism I have is that this game is way too forgiving, and it only has 22 levels. Those two factors combined mean that you will probably knock Splasher out in two hours or less and be left thirsty for more. Kinda sad. I'm waiting for Splasher 2. Striker's Edge. Eager to relive those gym class dodgeball sessions? Nobody ever is. But we're going to. Oh, chin up. This time you'll get to wear a suit of armor and pelt the other team with spears and arrows and maybe even magic. The nerdiest version of dodgeball to ever exist. You'll choose from a roster of eight heroes and battle it out on a wide variety of arenas. Each stage has its own hazard, which helps prevent things from getting too dull. The pixel graphics are very likely my favorite part of this game. They shoved in more detail than I even thought possible. The sound is nice enough. Nothing to complain about there, but the complaining is coming. The game looks and sounds nice enough, but movement feels a little bit on the slippery side, which is extremely detrimental in a sports ball game that should be all about precision. The online community is a ghost town, as it is for most indie games, and the bots are cheesable to the point that they don't even really present a challenge. And if you want the real kicker, the absolute icing on the shit cake, the devs abandoned ship years ago. This is a dead game in more ways than one. Normally I'd encourage the developers to come back and fix what was broken, but Striker's Edge was such a bland experience that I promptly forgot about it the moment I quit the game. It is a middling game that has fallen into obscurity for good reason. They should rename it Stinker's Edge. It's not even a good joke. <laughs> Mana Spark. So far there's been a pattern in this bundle. Did you catch it? Good game, bad game, good game, bad game. Well, this game does nothing to break that streak. I love Mana Spark. It's actually one of the first games that I bought when I first got my Nintendo Switch. I mean, the fact that it was on pretty steep discount helped that decision, but it was also motivated by a love for the game. Extremely lo-fi pixel graphics that still manage to convey so much. Music that easily sucks you into another world. Combat that feels, oh, so intense and satisfying. I will admit that the game is a bit short. There are only three biomes with limited enemies in each, and you only get three characters with which to explore those biomes, but the experience is just so satisfying. Monsters will actually work together to try and bring you down, and each type of enemy has its own AI. If you leave boars alone, they won't try and gore you, so you save them for last, that sort of thing. Each failure brings new lessons, and that is the essence of what makes roguelikes one of my favorite genres out there. Add to all that a cool dark fantasy story about humans being enslaved and not allowed to use magic, and then rebelling and doing it anyways? Hell yes, Mana Spark. While you're mostly fending off enemies with a bow and arrow, there are also traps to be laid, which adds a new dimension to the gameplay that I really like. At this point, I pretty much know Mana Spark like the back of my hand, and yet I continue to come back for the thrill of combat time and time again. Definitely try this game out. Roof Rage. So, how's the pattern looking? This one's gonna be a bad game, right? No, friends! I'm happy to say that the curse is lifted, and Roof Rage is a tasty treat to behold. This is the kind of innovation I like to see. You can't really nail this game down by comparing it to something else. It's a rooftop platform fighter that increases knockback the more you're damaged, kinda similar to Smash Brothers, but there's also an HP bar. The combat is fast and frantic, and it has been polished to a high shine. I will say that most combat is aerial, so if you're looking to land some ground-based attacks, you're going to be crippling yourself. Unless you're using those ground-based attacks to punish a missed attack from the air. Combos also aren't really relevant in a game like Roof Rage. It feels a bit more like a fencing bout. You can certainly chain together a couple of attacks, but you aren't going to be working through an entire life bar with an endless combo chain like some other fighting games not only allow, but actually encourage. This makes things feel much more even in my experience. The AI is kind of fiddly, 
like getting stuck in a loop of approach opponent, retreat to seat better positioning, but once you actually start fighting them, they're liable to beat that ass. With 13 characters and 13 stages, it's a little small, but you're sure to find something that'll suit your tastes. If you like fighting games, give Roof Rage a try. Streets of Red, Devil's Dare Deluxe. If you shove beat-em-ups into a blender with half a horror movie and add a slight sprinkling of internet memes, well, maybe more than a slight sprinkling, then you'll end up with Streets of Red. It's a pretty obvious reference to Streets of Rage, but it actually manages to be a fun experience in its own right. The game relies pretty heavily on plucking those strings of nostalgia wrapped around all of our hearts, but even seeing past all the jokes and references to other media, I'm still pretty impressed by this beat-em-up brawler. The worst I can say about it is that it feels kinda slow, but considering it is a Streets of Rage homage, I suppose that makes sense in a way. Old school beat-em-ups are decently fun, but I'll be honest when I say I'd rather play Streets of Red. It feels like a legitimate upgrade. Did your old beat-em-ups have a combo system? Did they let you pull off some actual fatalities? That is a genius addition that increases the skill ceiling by a rather large margin. Why would you simply beat a man to death when you can actually dismember him in front of his friends and loved ones? Beautiful. Streets of Red has so much to love. I would like to see a game with a few more original thoughts instead of just cramming every meme and reference that they could fit, but six playable characters, each with three special abilities, means that you'll be able to milk this game for a good long while. Old School Musical Staying in the theme of games that shamelessly prey on your nostalgia, we have Old School Musical, as if you couldn't tell by the old school part of the name alone. Another thing that might be given away by the musical part of the game's title is the fact that this is a rhythm game. The bane of my existence. We don't talk about rhythm games much. Not many people seem to make them. But whenever they do pop up, I do nothing but struggle. It's quite sad to witness, actually. Regardless of my distaste for the genre, Old School Musical managed to keep me engaged by offering a journey through time. Who doesn't want to experience the evolution of video games set to a thumping chiptune soundtrack? Oh, it's good. The humor and enjoyment is there, but similar to the aforementioned Streets of Red, I can't tell if that's simply because of my nostalgia goggles or if the game is legitimately enjoyable. My nine-year-old seemed to like it, even though she doesn't have much of a gaming background at all. One thing that I can definitively state about Old School Musical is that, again, similar to Streets of Red, it feels like it fails to develop a personality of its own. It's like that weird kid in high school that didn't know how to interact with other humans, so he just shouted movie quotes and memes as a non sequitur, and nobody ever knew quite how to respond to that. Back in my day, we just called them meme spouts. Well, Old School Musical is a lot more fun than hanging out with that kid, but again, I just wish it would take some real chances and try to develop its own flavor. Hover. We've had four good games in a row, but Hover might be the one to break the streak. Open world parkour game? It sounds awesome on paper, but I can see a million things that might go wrong as well. It's kind of set for success because I do remember zoning out to Jet Set Radio for what feels like days at a time, and I did discover that indeed Hover is legitimately awesome. The multiplayer aspect was an extremely smart idea. If you're hanging out by yourself in this game, it's fun, but it can get pretty stale. If you boot it up with friends, the playtime is nearly infinite. Though that might say more about my friends than it does about Hover itself. Well anyways, it's a fun game that goes for its own style while still making references to other things. Old School Musical, Streets of Red, are you paying attention? Hover lacks a lot of polish, but it's the Jet Set Radio MMO that I never knew I wanted, so I can't really knock it too hard. The story is a little cringe with some how do you do fellow kids vibes as they talk about the unthinking public and the sheeple. Like, whoa, what an independent thought that's never been had before. Fucking mouth breathers thinking that they're the only sentient people on the planet. The movement also feels a little bit floaty, but that just might be my brain expecting this to be a clone of Jet Set Radio. Overall, it is a fun ride with a fucking amazing soundtrack. Definitely don't write this one off. Dead in Vinland. Greedy hand rubbing intensifies. I already have this in my library, but I just love to talk about dungeon crawling and resource management and survival RPGs, and Dead in Vinland is a fine blend of all these things. 
It feels like this is another great game that slipped under most people's radar, and that's really a shame. I mean, there are reasons that it didn't quite hit the big leagues, but there are reasons that, because of my tastes, I can pretty easily overlook. Some people don't like getting bent over by a random number generator, and having their careful plans shoved where the sun don't shine. I, on the other hand, adore it. I hate planning, and when things fall apart, it leads to thinking on your feet and improvising. Your solution does not have to be pretty. It just needs to be functional, much like these videos. <laughs> At least on the player side of things. The developers seem to have forgotten a lot of quality of life additions that would really go a long way. Let's say you want to send a dude out to chop wood. You have to compare his fatigue to the fatigue the activity will add, and then there are weather modifiers on top of that, and all this info's on three or four different screens, and realistically, it could have just been a fucking mouse over tooltip that shows you a breakdown of all the fatigue factors. This makes the gameplay feel exceedingly slow. Then there's also a lack of info for making choices and upgrades. You will learn the hard way, and you will die a lot. But the game's called Dead in Vinland, not Happy Fun Time in Vinland. The art and story keep me coming back for more, despite the harsh nature and the lack of quality of life additions. It isn't for everyone, and I'm okay with that. But it does hold my attention exceptionally well. I'll sit down with it for anywhere from 8 to 15 hours, and then die and set it aside for a couple of months before I start to get that nagging in the back of my head that says, Oh, hey, Dayton, let's go play Dead in Vinland again. Then inevitably, I will die and uninstall it again. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter, or as I like to call it, your Artistic Licensed Survivors Group Entry Card. Ugh. At first I thought this was one of those point-and-click Sherlock games that was developed by Frogwares, and I was totally ready to tear it a new asshole. But this title actually looks like it has a lot of potential. So, cool. I'm excited to take a look at it, but first let's see who published this. Frogwares? What the flying fuck? It looks like our little tadpole is finally growing up, or at least trying to. The previous Sherlock titles weren't necessarily my cup of tea, but they did a decent job at conveying who Sherlock Holmes is. This game tried to stray from the point-and-click genre, that's right, I finally got my wish, and oh my god, how I wish that I could take that wish back. This title is deeply flawed. The story clocks in at just under six hours, but it's fairly interesting. The game also looks nice, but the things you'll need to do to progress in this game and see the story through... Ugh. It's like a series of Mario Party minigames. Push blocks in a sewer! Do some quick time events! Follow a dude around in an absolutely unengaging stealth mission! I'm glad the developer's trying new things, but it just doesn't feel cohesive at all. Speaking of trying new things and failed attempts at growing up, the level of violence in this game is just pretty over the top. You guys know me, I'm not opposed to violence in a video game, but when it literally adds nothing, I have to ask, why? Just why? If this is a modern take on gaming, then I'll happily go back to the days of point and click. This game is bland as hell, which is an insult to one of the most interesting characters in literature. An absolute travesty that by no stretch of the imagination belongs in the top tier. Get the shit out of here! <laughs> Bring Mana Spark up to the top. Uh, so what do I think of the bundle overall? I think you're paying $11 for 9 amazing games and 3 turds in the punch bowl. Honestly, I can say that the beat the average tier looks more tempting than the top tier. Of course, the $1 tier is basically always a good deal, even if you're only getting Splasher and Impulsion as the good games. 50 cents each for those? Ooh, that's killer. Every game is good in the beat the average tier, at least on some level. I mean, you know, if you're not into rhythm games and don't care about video gaming history, then old school musical probably won't appeal to you, but far be it for me to say that it is actually definitively a bad game. And then in the top tier, you've got Sherlock Holmes, which, I mean, some people seem to enjoy, but I really hated it. <laughs> and Hover, which, it's, it's okay. But honestly, I'd rather just go play Jet Set Radio. <laughs> and Dead in Vinland also isn't necessarily going to grab everybody's taste, so I'm going to say Beat the Average would be my suggestion for this bundle. And it looks like that's about accurate, because considering the average is not even half of the top tier, I think most people are just going for the 
or or hitting on the average. But yeah, this is a really tasty, tasty humble bundle. I like this a lot. Away is definitely the worst game that I've played in a while. Striker's Edge is just super, super boring. <laughs> But yeah, basically everything else was just a great experience, so I'm not going to take a crap on it just because two games didn't quite stack up. That's a mistake. So if you're going to grab it, beat the average. And if you're going to beat the average, I hope that you'll use my link, which is in the description and the pinned comment, and I would massively appreciate that. I also hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video, friends. We've also got more links in the description besides just that affiliate link. We've got Twitter, where I'm shitposting, Discord, just started up a new giveaway today and of course the patreon people helping me to live my dreams so i'd like to call them out by name nico the legend radimus cisco crimson albedo damon darkstar and lady nix thank you guys so much for loving this channel the way that you do but i appreciate everybody for listening so i hope that you'll join me for the next one and continue listening to me which should be a fanatical bundle I think I have the Untamed bundle already written, so that should be coming up relatively shortly, and I hope that you guys will keep your eyes out for it. So anyways, friends, this has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye.